Hello everybody, my name is Ratnos, and in this video I want to show off a couple of useful macros that uh, are useful for anybody playing really in any PvE setting. I think they're probably pretty useful in PvP as well, but particularly in PvE these things are going to help you improve your DPS. So this is for any ground targeted spell. So on Vengeance Demon Hunter you've got stuff like your Sigils, uh, your Infernal Strike. Uh, for a lot of other specs though have something like this, you know, Death and Decay, um, Flame Strike. Anything, particularly anything rotational, anything that you cast frequently that requires you to create a targeting circle. Because say you're wanna, you want to cast one of those things normally, right? You know normally how when you use your, your buttons you can kind of like spam the next one and it'll go off instantly and it'll save, like it'll go through even your ping, right? You won't lose any time from the ping. That doesn't work with the targeting circles normally, right? If I want to cast my Sigil and I, I, I have to actually wait until I'm off global before I can even get the targeting circle, and then I have to click through, right? So I'm going to be missing time where I'm off global, and I'm not actually casting my sigil. But there are some macros that'll help you with this, and these are at player or at cursor uh, versions of your spells. So for instance, here's at cursor sigil of flame. I'm attacking, just spamming my buttons, and then my next global is going to be a sigil, and just bang. goes down instantly without having to wait for that global to start. No targeting circle involved. Uh, and that is from using the at cursor uh, in brackets here before the sigil thing, the show tooltip here. I think this is even irrelevant these days. You just need to put this in every macro so it would still tooltip when you moused over it uh, and show the right icon. Uh, so that's at cursor. It is less precise, right? Because you're not getting that targeting circle. You're not going to see what's in the circle. You're not going to be able to perfectly aim it, but it is faster. You're going to get more casts over the course of an encounter. Uh, and I think that for many players, if they tried this out, they'd find they actually really like this on a lot of their spells. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for like two minute cooldowns that require precision when placed. Something like, you know, Spirit Link or Barrier that really needs to go in the right spot um, and you can afford to delay it by a couple a couple milliseconds off the global. Um, but something like Sigil of Flame, something like Flame Strike, something like Death and Decay, you're going to save a lot of globals over the course of a fight by putting that thing on at cursor rather than uh, just casting it normally. Now, at player is a little bit of a different story. At player, cast it directly under your feet. Uh, so for instance, there's at player Infernal Strike. Um, this has a couple of uses. Uh, for instance, if you're about to get knocked back, right, you can just spam that button and it'll cancel your knockback. Um, so like it, it, I'd use that on Sire and Athreus, for instance. They're, the blood price throws you up, knocks you back, and I immediately press uh, at player Infernal Strike and it just leaps me right on the ground directly below me and I don't have to aim and be precise with where my Infernal Strike is going to go and it has those benefits of not needing to, you know, create the targeting circle first. Um, I wouldn't recommend using this for most rotational damage abilities, but it's fine as a lazy extra bind for something. Uh, so, like, I, I would recommend always having a way to cast Sigil Flame, for instance, at, fl at range, but... Having one version that just casts it directly under you that you can press as well if you've got your, your cursor away from where you want to cast it uh, and it, it's not a problem, that's totally fine. It does get a little bit intensive on the number of key binds to do this, but like me personally, I actually, during progression, I have all three binds for Infernal Strike on my bars. I replace my mount bind with the at cursor version, and so then that one lets me do the instant you know leaps anywhere I want. Then I have the regular version that lets me be precise, lets me choose if I need to if I need to be sure that I'm, you know, if I'm not quite sure whether my Infernal Strike is going to make me to the statue, right, I can see the reticle first and make sure that it actually is going there before just spamming the button. Um, and of course, it's not going to work because of the line of sight issue, but, uh, you know, sometimes you got to be careful with an ability like that, but particularly on a fight like Stone Legion Generals, where every 20 seconds you need to leap away from something at a pretty precise time, uh, you don't necessarily want this to be a two-click process, so you want to just be able to spam and go. Uh, and that, I think, is again something that... So for, for heroic leap style abilities, I think that at cursor is absolutely something to, to consider using. There I'd be much more inclined to have a two a two keybind solution, if possible, or a modifier key uh, solution. Alright, so those are the at cursor and at player binds. Uh, I gave some Demon Hunter examples for them, but... Basically, my recommendation, again, is any rotational damage ability, try it out on at cursor, see if you like it. Um, my guess is that you will find a damage increase from doing that uh, on almost everything. Let me now go and show you some Warlock tech. Okay, so this next tip is for Warlock gateways, using these in a raid setting in particular in a reliable fashion. Historically, there have been these mechanics where you need to, you know, gateway at a pretty precise time, uh, and... 
there have been various solutions that people have come up with to avoid the problem of 20 people jumping on a gateway, trying to spam click on it, and clicking on each other instead. The first thing that everybody came up with was this uh, interface, so key bindings and targeting here, interact with mouse over. They bound this to scroll wheel up or down and they just spammed it at the appropriate time and hoped it would work. Um, that was useful, that was better than nothing. We used that on fights like Kill Jaden, uh, back when there was a pretty precise gateway timing to cancel a knockback on that fight. These days, there have been several fights, though, where we've developed even better technology for handling that kind of stuff. So uh, examples of this were like Carapace and Azoth taking a gateway when the uh, the swirly Doom Tempest thing comes down. Or recently, uh, Sire Denathrius, the last phase when you get a Massacre, Ravage, Overlap, and you need to gateway away instantly uh, so that your melee can move into the spot where the range just were. And so you have a very short window where you need everybody in the raid who can click on a gateway to do it immediately. Here's the new way that you do that. Uh, you're going to use the interactive mouse over again, but rather than trying to spam the gateway location itself, you're actually going to focus the gateway. So you do a slash focus at mouse over macro, uh, which you could just make it. You just do focus slash focus, and you do at mouse over if you wanted to do that. Mouse at mouse over there. Uh, so you'd, have, you'd use this macro, uh, and you'd set focus on the gateway. Uh, and oops. Uh, then you'd have a, a focus unit frame, right? Everybody has focus unit frames. And you would mouse over that, which is always there, always in the same place, 100% reliable. And then you would hit your interactive mouse over bind when it was time to do the mechanic. Uh, and that is a 100% reliable way to do your gateway every single time. So uh, that is the, the secret sauce, right? You slash focus at mouse over, mouse over the unit frame, uh, and then bind a key bind to interact with mouse over and use that at the prescribed time. Uh, that is the, the Warlock tech. That's some rating macros here that might help you out. Uh, hope this video helped. Let me know if it did. Let me know if you can use any of these tricks anywhere. Particularly the first ones I think almost everybody could benefit from if you have any ground targeted stuff. Much better quality of life uh, from using either of those macros. Uh, if you're looking for the text from these macros, I'll try and remember to put them in the description below. Check out my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.